Hey everybody, Jason Cooper here from Kickstarted, the documentary about crowdfunding that's coming out later this year. Uh, we're doing another episode of Funded Friday, and I'm like super excited to have this week's guest, Kitty, on. Uh, Kitty is a rapper and musician, and is about to well has funded her first full length album on Kickstarter. The project is still live. The album is now called Miami Garden Club, and it has raised over $38,000 and has 19 days to go. Um, so welcome, Kitty. Thanks for, for being on Funded Friday. Hi. Hi. So uh, rather than me tell people about it, why don't you give us like the quick top-level overview of what the album is and uh, why you put it on Kickstarter? Well, it's, it's the first album I've ever done that's real, like full length and has a physical release. I've never gotten to do that before because I've never had a record deal. So I've, I've been putting out music for free just online for like three or four years. And I decided with this record, I was like, I really just want to, I want to hold it in my hands and like do all the things that I could do if I did have a record deal. And for the entire year, I've been kind of like working on getting a deal and pitching to people and then negotiating, just like thinking about it. And finally I was like, I kind of just want to do it myself. I've, I've been doing everything myself for so like so long that it just made a lot of sense. I, I The idea like came to me. And then I spent like months planning it out and uh, it went way better than I thought it was going to. So, <laughs> Well, yeah, you definitely succeeded. Your goal was $25,000 and I'll, I'll ask you about that in a minute. But for people who don't know you um, or know your story, you can give us a little bit of a recap. Basically, like I, you know, you are self-made. Um, you've utilized the web extremely well in building a community. Can you just sort of give us the broad strokes of how you have built that community and what you know what's you, what is you've done to be able to succeed as a musician independently thus far? Well, the the reason I kind of didn't really expect to be a musician. I kind of put a video on the internet, and it went viral sort of and uh and for a while I was just like a really polarizing person because I was kind of doing something that was really unique at the time it's not so unique anymore it's kind of like become a lot more normal but at the time my music was really like lo-fi and personal and it was like a white girl rapping which was like still not chill and uh and so people were kind of confused by it and talked about it a lot and it, that really helped me I mean there was a big decision I had to make where I was like do I want to just like quit this because this is like a lot of pressure and I don't really know what I'm doing or I can just run with it and wing it and that's what I decided to do and I just kind of I ran away from home and went to New York City and took every meeting that I was offered and played every single show and met everybody and just Every time somebody was like, hey, do you want to come to the studio? I was like, sure. And uh, I just made a lot of friends. You know, it's like, I think the best way to get, I don't know, to succeed as an independent musician is just to, like, be, be nice to everyone and, like, just be a friend. Always, like, you know, if somebody asks you for a favor, like, do it. And in the end, it, it kind of all comes together because people are willing to help you do what you want to do instead of you having to like rely on people to in a in a business way it's more of a personal relationship that you have and it's i think that's the biggest thing sort of you know speaking about personal relationships what strikes me about you and even you telling that story um is your just your general level of seemingly authenticity you, you seem <laughs> often authentic uh, authentic person you, uh, you, you're open and you share, um, and it seems like that's been a big factor in your success. And if you read your, your crowdfunding page, it's even there. You're, you're, you acknowledge the fact uh, that you're extremely lucky, that your fans have been a big part of you getting here. Um, why do you think it is that people are embracing that in particular in the way that you've built the community around it? Why is authenticity so important? Well, I think that... Uh Especially as as like a, a young woman from a middle class like suburban background, like 
there are a lot of weird pressures that I think that like the music industry doesn't really address. You know, there's not a whole lot of like girls like me that are famous and will talk about the stuff that people will want to talk about. And I feel like I've always been kind of personal with my fans and like willing to talk about stuff and like with them and give advice if I can and talk about the things that happen to me that I know happen to everybody else. But I think the only, the, the reason that people think I'm so much more like this like friend that they have is because no matter how many like followers I get or like fans I get, I'm still just, I don't really treat it like it's any different than if I was just at home, like if I was just like chilling and in school and the things that I talk about with people are like the same things I've talked about my, with my friends. And uh, I think that really strong relationship I have with all those people and makes them willing to help me and, and make that makes them like me, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, and they've stepped up big time. You have 831 backers, and I imagine by the time your campaign ends, uh, you're sort of in the traditional like middle wall of a campaign. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure you'll have another spike towards the end. Um, they, you know, they've stepped up to support you. So maybe you mentioned that you had, you know, you spent months putting this together. What were you thinking about? Um, you have some really interesting goals, like people can spend a day at the spa with you. <laughs> you offered to let someone name a track on your album. And you, of course, have the traditional stuff where people can, you know, buy a copy of, of the CD digitally or get the LP. Um, and what were you thinking about going in the campaign? Were there other campaigns that you looked at where you're like, "Wow, that's a way that I want to approach," you know, getting my community to support me financially? Well, there, there's been so many campaigns that I've seen and been like, oh, this is cool. And I kind of went back to that, especially my friends on Gucci did a fucking huge one. Yeah. And I, I always like, I looked up to them and I also was around for a lot of it. So I kind of learned some of their, from some of their difficulties. Um, I talked to Kickstarter. I like did calls. I like everybody I planned on working with on the album. I talked to just to, to like get every single like price that I was gonna need, and uh, I definitely looked at a lot of a lot of Kickstarter's for ideas for rewards. But I didn't really, I didn't, I don't know how to price that stuff because everybody things like oh, hanging out for a day, like everybody prices that differently. So I've just been trying to like wing it and like see what people want to pay for that type of thing and like adjusting it accordingly. But I very meticulously budgeted all of the, all of the physical stuff. So that I think that's like a really important thing for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, people get trapped in selling things and then end up not realizing they have to pay for all of that oh, yeah. the thing they wanted to do. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this then like what, what you know you you learn things from other groups uh, and other campaigns is there something that you've learned in the course of doing this that you didn't know like whether a good thing or a bad thing about running a campaign? Well, I definitely the the plateau in the middle is very real, which I was I wasn't sure how that was gonna go because everybody told me about it. But like my first day, I reached my goal, so I was like, maybe it'll just keep going. I don't know, but it didn't. It stopped right now, but hopefully it'll pick up again in the end. So I think that's like a that's a big one. But I also I can't really think of anything because I read so many guides before I started and like watched every video. So I feel like it's. That's that's the thing you got to do. So for people who don't realize it, crowdfunding is the process of doing it. I find for most creators is a tremendous amount of work. Can you give us a sense of like how much time, maybe even preparing for it? But now that it's going, you put into promoting it and tweeting about it and talking about it and thinking about it every day. Oh my god! Like <laughs> there there was like two straight months where every day I would just be like researching things, pricing things, like calling people to talk about stuff and like running ideas by everybody. It was like every single day for two months that I planned this out. And then now, like when it started, I definitely spent the first entire week just sitting at the computer. Like I didn't see anybody. Right? I, like, I was just sitting on the computer like answering everyone's emails and like you have to because there's people have so many questions 
and so many suggestions and issues and stuff. And like, you have to, you know, thank everyone for helping you. So that was like a very big, the first week of it was, was huge. And then I kind of, this week, I've only been spending like a couple hours a day, like working on things like that because I just needed a break and it's also kind of a good time to do that. But I feel like, uh, if it was if it was some kind of like invention or something that I was kickstarting, like it would be constant for the entire month, and it's I don't know, it's a lot of fucking work. I I can't even explain it. So let's like sort of jump ahead. Uh, how many days left? Nineteen days. Mm -hmm. uh, the moment it ends or the day after, what are you doing? Like you know, you've already made your goal, so the suspense is gone in that sense. Yeah. Like, what are you going to be doing? to move forward like how do you take the momentum that you built with this campaign and turn it into the album that you were hoping to make well there's i still have to record i've been writing it this entire time and for like the past two years so a lot of a lot of the creative part of it is pretty much done so it's all about like this the studio time and like production and everything and uh i have to I mean, obviously, I like made a lot of promises, and I have like a million ideas. So I have to hash out all the art and videos and all that type of thing. And then I have to order a shitload of merch, and I have to make physical copies of my old records. I have to. I have so much to do. Oh my god! I didn't even think about that until right now. <laughs> all right, well, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to get you uh, <laughs> about it. Um, well then let's like maybe, you know, obviously there's a lot that goes into delivering what you're doing and making an album isn't easy. Um, I'm wondering if you're thinking about, you know, you were building, you've already built a pretty large community on Tumblr and Twitter and on YouTube and now you're monetizing that community. What are your hopes that this album can do for you as a musician in terms of your career? Are you, you have expectations about that already? Are you sort of taking it one step at a time, where do, you, where do you want this to, you know, lead for you? Well, I kind of had to stop having expectations pretty early on because with music, I, I like, the thing that I tell everybody is just that you have no idea what's going to happen in any given situation. And uh, I'm hoping that now that people have seen, like, this is how much my fans, like, believe in me to make this, like, record, I already know that all of those people are going to be stoked to hear it because they gave me money to make it. And I hope that other people who maybe didn't really, didn't, don't like me or like don't want to pay attention to me for whatever reason or uh, kind of discredit me as an artist, which a lot, a lot of people do from residual jokes and stuff in my like old music just kind of like it wasn't very good and I've been working really hard for like years to make it better and so I hope that'll get people to pay attention a little bit more and I just really want to go on tour in Europe so I'm hoping for that but other than that I'm trying to be like well, you know whatever happens it'll happen and I'll have a record <laughs> I don't know very cool well let me just, we'll just sort of wrap it up I just you know, one last question for you. What, what's the one reason people should go and check out, you know, just give one opportunity to give you a chance to pitch the album. Like what can people expect when they back the kitties, uh, my, Miami garden club. Is that what the album's mm -hmm. called? Yeah. What can they expect when they put it in, you know, in their iTunes or they, or they back it? What are they, what, what kind of music are they going to hear? Why should they back it? It's okay. Well, it's all about, it's just like a collection of like stories from my life. I grew up in Florida and Florida, everybody knows Florida is insane. So it's just about like growing up in Florida and like all the, you know, things on the internet and just a lot of stories. And it's really pretty. It's, I've, I've put a lot of time into making it like very beautiful and it's fun and happy and positive And I don't know, it's really good. Everyone should give me money to make it better, but it's really good regardless. And uh, it's gonna have a lot of like really beautiful visuals, and I want to like make this whole world around it. So that's that's why. Cool. 
Well, we definitely think it's worth backing. And uh, I want to thank you again for coming on Funded Friday and telling us about the album. So uh, thanks again, Kitty. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. That's it for this week's Funded Friday. We'll be back next week with another, you know, really interesting and innovative crowdfunding project creator. And if you want to know more about crowdfunding uh, and the film we're making about it called Kickstarter, check out our website, kickstartedmovie.com. Thanks. See you next week.